In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel Welcome and marhaba to another wonderful episode of this silsila Dimensions of Islamic Life where we discuss different facets of our Islamic life and the problems and the issues that we are, as Muslims have to deal with on a daily basis and, and inshallah azza wa jal and in this program we bring to you uh, some uh, solutions uh, for these uh, hurdles in life and in, in our spiritual uh, pursuit of the achievement that we want to get in order to gain the proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, let's inshallah uh, begin with the recitation of durood and salam in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said with regards to the virtues of reciting salat and salam and he said that on the day of judgment, the closest to me will be that person who has recited the most durood upon me. So let's recite together. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam. Dear viewers, alhamdulillah, today our topic of discussion is time management from an Islamic perspective. Yes, and it is an important subject of a discussion because time is what we have with us. The sum of our life is what? In terms of, you know, counting our years that we have spent and the years that we got ahead of us, inshallah, if Allah Azza wa Jal allows us to live longer, then it is all we have. And this is the time we have, we must make the most out of it. Everyone has a finite amount of time. You have a finite amount of time. I have a finite amount of time that I'm gonna be living on this planet and thereafter will cease to exist, meaning will pass away and go into a different domain. And this is the short life that we have. We need to make the most out of it. As the narration goes, that Adunya Mazrahatul Akhirah, that the world is the cultivation for the hereafter. What are we cultivating? What are we sowing that we can reap in, in the hereafter? This is what our focal point should be as Muslims. And this is where our life should revolve around. And when it comes to our time, it is very obvious that we all have the same amount of time, meaning the, the standard of time, meaning seconds, minutes, hours, days and nights, weeks and months, they are all equal for all of us. Meaning there were those pious predecessors who had achieved so much in such a little time. And we also have the same amount of time, meaning our one hour is still 60 minutes as their one hour was 60 minutes. So how is it that some people achieve so much in that 60 minute? Whereas we find ourselves complaining and in this uh, predicament that, you know what, I don't have enough time. No one has a minute of 70 seconds. We all have 60 seconds. None of us have an hour consisting of 65 minutes. We all got 60 minutes in an hour. But how is it that uh, we cannot achieve that much as, as some people, they tend to do? because they know the value of time. We all have 24 hours in our lives. Nobody has 25 hours. Yet, those who value time, they get so much out of it, so much mileage out of these 24 hours. Whereas we find ourselves in this situation that we don't know when the day started and when it ended and we have achieved nothing at the end. Let's not waste our precious time that we've got with us. This is all we have. The time that has elapsed just a moment ago, 
is something that I can never get it back. You can never get back time. What is our responsibility? Meaning, we tend to be regretful about it when we don't have enough time. And uh, when the time is wasted away and uh, we find ourselves that, you know, the deadline is getting closer and I don't have much time. So what is the solution to all of this? The solution lies, alhamdulillah, in the biography of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the seerah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa The time that we have is a bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a ni'mah. And time is divided in many ways. Sometimes we refer to the same time as minutes, seconds, hours. Sometimes we call it day. Sometimes we refer to the time, all our measures of time, day, night. Sometimes we say morning and evening. These are all measures of time. And at times we refer to time uh, as past, future, and present. SubhanAllah, these are the ways we, we, we associate with time. And as we know, time waits for no one. We only uh, get to realize the seriousness of it when we got a flight to catch, when we got a train or bus to catch, when we got a, a tight deadline, when we need to uh, get to an appointment on time, when we get to go for an operation, and then the, the specialist won't see you because they're also sticking to a time, they've got other patients to attend to, you know? so. If we don't make ourselves available on time, then we miss the flight. And then the flight company or the airport is not going to wait for you because time waits for no one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with regards to describing the, uh, the concept of time, he has said in the Holy Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارِ And amongst his signs are night and the day. Among the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the nights and the day. These are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are the measures of time. This is an eye-opening statement of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. He says that inna hadha layla wa nahar khazanatan fanzuru ma tasna'una fihima. That the day and night are treasures. Think carefully how you utilize them. Time is truly a double-edged sword. Either you learn to utilize it properly or it will waste you. If we waste time, the time will waste us in return. And this is, this is a fact. You must have seen in people's lives, those people, people who do not value their time, the world doesn't value them either. Why? Because we are the creatures, the kind of creatures that are meant to be governed by time. We need to manage our time, schedule our time, different uh, times for different tasks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us such a beautiful system in the deen of Islam to manage our time. Look at five times salah. It is a timely obligation. For example, you cannot uh, read your Fajr Salah in the time of Zor Salah. Can you do that? No, you cannot. You cannot read your Zor Salah at the time of Isha. You cannot do that. Why? Because Salah is an, a, a timely obligation, timeless obligation. And in this way, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is making us accustomed to, to follow a robust and a foolproof system. If we feel that, no, we, we cannot do justice to our time, then why don't we adopt this philosophy of Islam? Designate your tasks based on the five times salah. Let's say, for example, you've got morning appointments and you wake up early and inshallah, this will be better for your health as well. And inshallah, the, the, the earlier you wake up, uh, the earlier you get busy with whatever uh, functions that you, need to, uh, you, you needed to perform, uh, for the day and uh, the day starts, alhamdulillah, from the time of dawn, the blessing of salah is there, you're making the zikr of Allah, thereafter you, you're taking care of the family needs, maybe as a family person you are uh, making breakfast and the family is really appreciative of it. And in this way, these little, little things that we do, it adds value to our lives. It has value to, uh, to the peace and harmony at home that we have. Whereas if we wake up late, everything is in chaos. 
It is a chaotic situation when you get up in the morning late and then you are rushing for everything. You forget things. You forget your phone at home. You forget your wallet. Then the traffic cop stops you on your way to when you are commuting to work. And then you get to realize, oh, no, I forgot my wallet. You can't produce your driver's license. You get into trouble. You get further delayed for work. So all of this happened just for one reason. And the domino effect, it just destroyed your, your mental peace. Why? Because you didn't value your time. Time waits for no one. Allah Azza wa states in the Holy Quran with regards to the value of time. Wal asr, inna al insana lafi khusr. By the oath of that era of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, indeed mankind is surely in loss. Illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. Except those who believed and did good deeds and advised one another towards the truth and advised one another to have patience. In this verse of the Holy Quran, the word loss, the term loss, lafi khusr, khusr, loss. The loss of mankind is that life which is the most valuable asset as human beings. And it is continuously deteriorating. The Quran says that. Therefore, we should use our time for virtuous actions and for the benefit of others. One of the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, I understood, I truly understood the meaning of Surah Al-Asr, the Surah that we have just recited. I truly understood the meaning of this Surah from a vendor who was selling ice in the market. And he would announce, have mercy on the one whose asset is melting away. Allah Akbar. Imagine if you, you are an ice vendor and this is, it's, it's a hot weather and you are selling ice in the marketplace. And as the time is passing by, your asset that you have is melting away and you cannot do anything about it. Hearing his cries, I remarked, the pious predecessor, he says, I remarked that this is the meaning of indeed mankind is surely in loss. In, in the verse of the Holy Quran that we have just recited. The life given to us is passing by quickly, just like the melting ice. If it is wasted on misdeeds, on, on useless activities, futile you know, um, uh, ways of our living, then we'll only reap loss, we'll only incur loss. There's no benefit to be obtained from such life where time is not valued. This is the value of time. And uh, we are again reminded in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in his Mubarak hadith, اغتنم خمسن قبل خمس. Take advantage of five before five. And what are those five things? Shababaka qabla haramik. Your youth before old age. And then, وَسِحَتَكَ قَبْلَ سَقْمِكَ And your health before illness. Number third, وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ And your wealth before poverty. Number four, وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغْلِكَ And your time of leisure before occupation. وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ And you should value your life before death. And death is certain, it will come, whether we like it or not. And it will come when we expect it the least. Are we prepared? Have we achieved enough in our lives? So if death approaches us, there's no regrets. Have we really made use of our valuable time and our tenure on this planet? That when we are taken away, we are not leaving here uh, sorrowfully in a state where we are not pleased with what we have achieved. And if we learn to value our time, that would make a difference to this kind of you know, thought process to reflect more often. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again says in his Mubarak Hadith, Mami Yawmin, 
طلعت شمس ہو فی ہی اللہ یقول ایوری ڈے وین دا سن شائنز اٹ اناؤنسز اٹ واٹ اٹ اناؤنسز من استطاع ان يعمل في خيرا whoever is capable of performing good in me today should do so فليعمله فاني غير مكرر عليكم ابدا because i will never return to you الله اكبر this hadith is so thoughtful thought provoking let's inshallah listen to the beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ma min yawmin tala'at shamsuhu fihi illa yaqul man istata'a an ya'mala fiya khayran fal ya'malhu fa inni ghayra mukarrarin alaykum abada. Every day when the sun rises, it announces that whoever is capable of performing good in me today should do so because I will never return to you. Meaning the time that, that has just elapsed, it will never come back. And then there's no use regretting. What has regretting over anything, you know, achieved you so far in life? It doesn't help our situation if we live the life of regret. So while we still have time, let's learn to make the most of it, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, as The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has advised us in this beautiful hadith. The pious predecessors, they have advised us, you know, as they had uh, the, our well-being in their mind. And they were concerned our, about our well-being, about the well-being of the Muslim ummah, of the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, such as the sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were those blessed souls who benefited others and joined the ranks of this beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the best of people are those who benefit people, who benefit others, subhanallah. And uh, Sayyidina Abu Darda, a great companion of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya ibn Adam, inna ma anta ayyamun fa kullama dhahaba yawmun dhahaba ba'duk. Dear people, you are nothing but the sum of a few days. You are nothing but the sum of a few days. When a day passes, a part of you vanishes forever. Consider the time that we have, that we got to live as our physical being. And with every passage of time passing, we are missing a piece of us. And it goes missing forever. It's not going to come back to you. Imagine if we were to lose our fingers one by one. How would we take it as? Would we take it as, no, it's just time. Tomorrow is another day. No, we wouldn't do that. We would take it really seriously. And this is such thought-provoking words uh, from this Sahabi Rasul, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is going to help you greatly. It has helped me, alhamdulillah. It has helped many, many like us. And this is such a powerful statement of a Sahabi of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is so much of wisdom that is hidden in it. Listen to it again. He says, dear people, you are nothing but the sum of a few days. When a day passes, a part of you vanishes forever. Someone said to Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. They said, O leader of believers, O Amir al Mu'mineen. You can do it tomorrow, leave it, you can do it tomorrow. And listen to his response. He replied, I struggle to complete my daily work. If I leave today's work for tomorrow, how will I complete the work of two days in one day? Are you looking at the thought process of our pious predecessors, the way they valued their time? Allahu Akbar. That every breath and moment of life is a valuable pearl and asset. However, most of us are unknowingly, you know, uh, they're wasting it away without realizing its worth. One way or another, we do know the, the worth of our time, but we tend to be heedless about it and oblivious of the fact and just 
lead a life like, you know, there's never going to be an end to your life or you are going to stay here forever. Nobody, my brother, nobody has stayed here forever to tell the tale. Neither will you, neither will I. So why are we fooling ourselves? The final Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that there are two bounties, two ni'mas of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala regarding which many people are misled. Number one is health and the second is free time. Our health, if we don't take it seriously, we're only going to know the worth of our health when our health is deteriorating, when your limbs are giving up, when your senses are giving up, when you are losing your eyesight, when you are losing your, your sense of hearing, when you are losing your sense of taste, when you are losing your sense of feeling in your hands, in your feet, only then we're going to realize the worth of it. Do we really want to wait for that to happen in order for us to realize that how important it is to take care of our health? Similar is our time, free time that we have, that we just waste it away thinking that, you know what, there's, tomorrow is another day. This attitude is not going to get us anywhere. Imagine if you thought of a life like that, you know, in your workplace, uh, you came any, any time that you felt like tomorrow you won't have a job. And then you are going to uh, go to authorities to fight your case. But you know, they have suspended me from my job. You asked for it. You literally did ask for it because of not showing up on time. Because they don't, they want to pay someone who can't be there on time. So if you are guilty of it, then you should look at your own attitude, your own, you know, um, commitment to time. Because if you cannot make it on time, then the next job you're going to have, same thing going to happen. It will repeat itself. The cycle will repeat itself until you change your situation, you change your condition. We, we learn to value our time. Because a foolish person, someone said to me once, a foolish person is he who keeps on doing the same thing and expects a different result. So let's not be like that fool who keeps on devaluing one's time and then expects everything to be fine, everything to be done on time, whereas we don't have any sense of time. Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our eyes to reality and um, the sooner we wake up from this slumber of sleep, the better it will be for us as people, as human beings, as a society, as a, a, an individual, as a thriving person. Wasting time causes loss in this world and in the hereafter. Uh, even after entering paradise, the person, uh, you know, uh, we as people will regret the time that we spent in, in this worldly life, the final Prophet of Allah Sallallahu said that the inhabitants of paradise will only regret one thing. They won't regret anything except for the moments that pass by without Allah's remembrance, in the moments in which they did not remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Akbar. The regrets associated with wasting time were discussed by the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, by the Sahaba, especially Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, who remarked, he is a brilliant companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says that, I regret nothing more than a day that ends and my lifespan decreases, yet my deeds have not increased. Allah Akbar. Can you realize the magnitude of it? Let's listen to it again. Let it sink in. He says that I regret nothing more than a day that has been, that ends. And after the end of the day, my lifespan decreases because you just spent another day. So your lifespan is not increasing, it's decreasing. Yet my good deeds have not increased. See the balance? The balance, the, the correct balance should have been that as our days on this earth are numbered, are being decreased, our good deeds, our virtues should increase. Inshallah, this is the balance that we need to keep. You know, the checks and balances, like how we like to keep our businesses. Why can't we 
employ the same principles to our lives, to our personal lives, to our professional life, to our family life, to our spiritual life, to every other facet of our life where we need to improve. One way to improve ourselves will be to improve our time management. And there is only one, there's only one uh, key ingredient to time management. Yes, it, it will happen to you. It, happen, it happened to me multiple times. It will happen to you. It happens to those who try. You're only going to fall when you're learning to walk. But if you refuse to walk, you're not going to fall. So yes, if you fail, get up and get going. You fail again, get up and get going. And this is the key rule of time management. Yes, sometimes we do relapse. And then we tend to realize, why am I living like a robot? Why do we have to uh, get certain things uh, done on time? Because you are not an animal. You are a civilized person. If an animal had to sleep the whole day, like the cats do, nobody is going to hold them accountable for it. But you are a civilized person. If an animal crosses the robot whilst it's red, there's, no, there's going to be no accountability on the animal because we don't expect them to be civilized. Are we animals? No, we are not. We are human beings. We are, alhamdulillah, the chosen creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are the, on top of that, we are Muslims and we are the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So we are supposed to be the ones that are setting example for others. And uh, in this regard, in this um, rule of time management, it can come handy. Yes, there is going to come time that we are going to uh, relapse into, you know, not really uh, doing justice to our time and we may get sidetracked or we may uh, get, you know, um, maybe our, our minds will start to wander and we will uh, start to waste our time as usual like before. And then we need to catch ourselves in that moment. What are you doing? You going, are you, what, what is it that you want to achieve out of your life? You want to become a failure or you want to succeed in life? You want to succeed in life, there is a price to pay. And as it is the case that you can achieve anything in life as long as you are willing to pay the price. You want to become an engineer, no problem. You invest your money, you endure, in, enroll yourself into a, an expensive university, into a credible university, and then you invest your time because to study you need time and all that that it requires. So you can achieve anything for as long as you are willing to pay the price. You want the tallest of building, you want to purchase it, no problem. You got the price for it to pay, you can go ahead. You want a successful life, you want a life where you, need, you, you don't have a problem managing your time. You have time for your family. You have time for your business. You have time for your job. You have time to do every, everything that is important to you. Dedicate time and allocate time to all these aspects of your life. You want time for leisure? Dedicate some time for that. And then, yes, you can have it for as long as you are willing to pay the price. You have time allocated for yourself to work. No problem, you work eight hours a day. Oh, it is just, you know, this, this time is meant to be, okay, let's not plan anything, let's go with the flow. So sometimes it is good to have, if you on a, on a holiday, yes, go with the flow. Have a field day. But if it's a normal day and you, ha you have responsibilities, you have obligations to, to yourself, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to your family, Yes, and you need, you only got this eight hours to fulfill all those obligations. How are you going to achieve it? You cannot until you schedule your time. Yes, you will relapse. It will happen to you. It happens to me. It happens to everyone. To err is human. But to be adamant on that error, that's where our solution lies. Do we want to be adamant? Do we want to be stubborn about it? Yes. I'm wasting my time away, so what? Is this the kind of attitude that we want to live our life by? No, this is not going to help us. But the attitude that, yes, I, yes, I've made a mistake. I just uh, let my uh, time slide by, you know. I'm sleepwalking through life. And then when you catch yourself in that moment, 
That is the time you wake up. And then inshallah, try to manage your time better. All we can do is try. As the saying goes, As-sa'yu minni wal itmamu min Allah. To try and to starve is up to me, but to fulfill it is up to Allah, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he sees us striving, inshallah azza wa jal, he will put barakah in it. So what are we waiting for? Let's inshallah, make some changes. If you need to make some changes, make those changes because all of it will be for the better. If you have been accustomed to a life where you have been sleepwalking through life and you feel like life has just passed you by and when that realization hits you, it, I know it's, it's not a very good feeling. You feel like you have been wrecked by a train, but then we all need to wake up at some times. And if this is your moment of awakening, let it be. It is a rude awakening, yes, but we can, inshallah, from day on, be mindful. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he again says in another uh, beautiful advice that he has imparted with us, with the Ummah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with us, with Muslims. And he says that, inni la'amqutur rajula an arahu farighan Laysa fi shay'im min amali dunya wala amali al-akhirah. Meaning, I despise someone who's free, but he's still useless. Whom I neither see him engaged in any worldly work or any religious work. Meaning, he's not doing anything with his time. What a waste. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. These are the nasihas and words from the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the most prominent Sahaba, one of the senior Sahaba, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. Do we know who's Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala? Okay, we all Hanafi, alhamdulillah, we follow Hanafi fiqh. The Imam of millions of Hanafis throughout the world, Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, his chain of fiqh ends at Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. And then it leads to the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is that personality, subhanAllah. Pioneers who have contributed to the society, they share this trait. If we were to ask the affluent and the successful people, you know, the, the recipe of success, most of them, uh, they'll, you'll find them saying that, you know, or you will notice about their lifestyle that they do value their time very much. Maybe sometimes you, you will be in, busy in a conversation with them and then they will truly um, um, you know, remember something and they'll tell you, you know what, uh, it, it is time I need to go. I've got some uh, commitment. They wouldn't just waste their time in chit chats and, and useless you know, uh, conversations. They, because they look for meaning in life. So we all do, but if we spend our life in meaningless activities, then we lose that meaning of life. Do something meaningful with your life, not just waste it away. Don't waste your time binge watching shows and all of that. That is not going to add any value to, to your life. Yes, in that time, you can utilize that time for, for better purposes. You know, make yourself useful, maybe acquire skill, you know, there is no saying that you, if you are an engineer, you must be, you must be stuck there in, in your career. What if you got a passion for helping people, you know, medically, that are medically challenged? You can become a doctor. There is no saying that you cannot become a doctor if you are an engineer. But yes, instead of doing that, we just wish. There's, there's just this wishful thinking, you know, oh, I'm an engineer, I got my a trade and life is good. Alhamdulillah, and, and I'm well off, and my fin financial uh, obligations are taken care of, and so on and so forth, I'm living a happy life. Uh, but uh, there's this one thing that I wish, you know, I wish I'd become a doctor so I could help people. By wishing, you know, you, you cannot go anywhere by having these wishful thinking. There is a beautiful share in Arabic 
that law kan al ilmu yuhsalu bil muna lama kana fil bariyati jahilu if knowledge could be obtained just by wishing you know i wish i was a doctor i wish i was an engineer i wish i was an astronomer can you become a doctor an engineer and an astronomer a psychologist just by wishing no you cannot nobody has so what makes you think that you can achieve this just by wishing and it must just happen as soon as you open your eyes you blink your eyes and you open your eyes so what what is the meaning of this arabic shir if knowledge could be obtained just by wishing then no one on the planet earth would remain ignorant is the entire world educated what is the literacy rate global literacy rate is it 100% is not 100% is way below 100%. In certain countries it's maybe up to maybe 80%, 70%. There is so much of illiteracy. So but everyone wishes that they were educated, they were learned. But you cannot become a learned person just by wishing, just by saying, "Oh, I wish." This hasn't gotten anyone anywhere in life. So what makes you think that it can get you somewhere? So inshallah put some effort Yes we all want to manage our time better or we just wish that you know what um I wish that you know I had enough time just by wishing can you have enough time can one hour more be added to your 24 hours of you the day you have can maybe one more minute be added to your 60 minutes of the hour that you have can one more second be added to the 60 seconds of a minute that you have no this is just a wishful thinking unless we uh, plan and and do something about it when you plan there is barakah in it inshallah azza wa jal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he sees you striving he puts barakah in that action subhanallah so as muslims we need to be respectful towards our time the way we spend it because this is all we have what is our life our life is the sum of the time that we're going to stay here i'm 36 i don't know how much time i got left but i do know i have had 36 years of age 36 years i had to make whatever i, I wanted to make of myself today where i am is what i have i decided to do with my life that's why where i am today where i am and um, where i need to go i need to now decide where i need to go from here and uh, what 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 are my future goals I, I, am i investing in in my future life and and inshallah i'll trying to better my life my spiritual life my financial life my family life my social life every other facet of my life my educational life am i improving or am i regressing am i progressing and we all like to progress in life so how are we going to progress in life if we uh, don't pay any attention to what we do with our time Yes uh, if time was money uh, we we will we would uh, we would really really protect you with our lives imagine if uh, somebody just you know would you as a in, in your right frame of mind would you like to take out your wallet and then take out the currency notes or whatever that you have and just start throwing it away would you do that you wouldn't do that but then why can we do the same with our time what makes us do that is the fact that we do not value we don't know the value of our time ask those people who have who are very busy in their lives who have got so much to do you know it is very hard to get even 5 minutes of their time because they value their time and they'll tell you they'll maybe give you a, a schedule maybe for 2 uh, 3 months later some some will give you the schedule for for next year that only next year they can give you 10 minutes of their time because in this year they are fully booked allah learn to value your time and inshallah learn to respect your time and the world will respect you respect your time and the time is yours and if we don't then yes it is the cause of our own humiliation in various different ways in one way then i can count may allah azza wa jalla grant us the ability and tawfiq to act upon these 
beautiful Quranic verses that we have just recited and learnt. And inshallah, these uh, beautiful ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the aqwal of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that we have shared with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all grant me the ability and tawfiq to act upon it and then to you inshallah azza wa jal. Ameen bijahi nabil ameen. Let's inshallah listen to this beautiful kalam and we'll be back after this kalam inshallah azza wa jal. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu ghafoor Allahu ghafoor Allahu rahim Allahu rahim Allahu yuhibbu al-muhsinin Huwa khalikuna Huwa razikuna Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer إن الله على كل شيء قدير يا رب العالمين الله الله صل على طه الأمين الله الله في كل وقت وحين الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 املأ قلبي باليقين الله الله ثبتني على هذا الدين الله الله واغفر لي والمسلمين الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 ذو تنغى كون هي الله 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 بادشاه ذو كون هي الله 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 مهر با ذو كون هي الله الله كيا وجي شان هي الله 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 سب دلوں کی جان ہے اللہ 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 اس کی اپنی شان ہے اللہ 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 حسب ربی جل اللہ 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 ما فی قلبی غیر اللہ 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 نور محمد صلی اللہ 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 راز دل کے جانے وہ الله 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 حال دی پہچانے وہ الله 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 پھر بھی توبہ مانے وہ الله 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 آسیوں کی آس ہے الله 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 اس کی رحمت خاص ہے اللہ 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 سب دلوں کے پاس ہے اللہ 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 حسب ربی جل اللہ 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 ما فی قلبی غیر اللہ 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 نور محمد صلی اللہ 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 أو الله دي ألبيتي الله 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 protect me and guide me الله 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 through your love and mercy الله 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 حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 Who is the all-capable? Allah, Allah, Allah. 
the curer and the healer Allahu Allah Allah who's the dominant all over Allahu Allah Allah Hasbi Rabbi Jalla Allah Allahu Allah Ma fi qalbi ghayr Allah Allahu Allah Nur Muhammad sallallahu Allahu Allah La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Allah Of adar gunaha Allahu Allah Alimin padishaha Allahu Allah Yureklerin penaha Allahu Allah Hasbi Rabbi Jalla Allah Allahu Allah Ma fi qalbi ghayr Allah Allahu Allah Nur Muhammad sallallahu Allahu Allah La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Allah Eşit Allah derdimi bu ahlara ma Rahmeyle başla günahlara ma Hayra ileyhem akşam hem sabahlara ma Hasbi Rabbi Jalla Allah Allahu Allah Ma fi kalbi gayr Allah Allahu Allah Nur Muhammad sallallahu Allahu Allah La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Allah Rabbul mashriqayni wa rabbul maghribayn فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَا وہ دونوں مشرکوں کا رب ہے اور دونوں مغربوں کا رب ہے تو تم دونوں اپنے رب کی کون کون سی نعمتوں کو جھٹلاؤ گے Lord of the two Easts and the two Wests So which of your Lord's favors will you deny? صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وعلی آلہ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَسَلَّمْ Dear viewers, you were listening to this beautiful kalam حَسْبِ رَبِّ جَلَّ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ Beautiful zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along with the zikr of Allah We were making the zikr of the beloved Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم ما شاء الله Alhamdulillah, our Rukn Shura Haji Abdullah Bi Battari Damad Barakat Mula Aliyah who was the reciter of this kalam, ما شاء الله He has such a beautiful personality, ما شاء الله and it is always, you know, so nice to see him and it really motivates you to do more, to achieve more, inshallah Azza wa He has helped so many of us and as the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَنْفَعُ النَّاسِ That the best of people are those who benefit others, subhanallah. Let's inshallah make ourselves beneficial to others as well. As we were just talking about time management and now this is time for our segment that uh, we do every day and today's book inshallah Azza wa Jal is a beautiful book and the name of that book is Panj Surah subhanAllah this is a book where different surahs of the Holy Quran short surahs of the Holy Quran are mentioned different du'as and different litanies are written there for your benefit inshallah Azza wa Jal so please do get yourself a copy of this book and this is available in English, subhanAllah. So there is no reason for you not to get it because it's in your native language and it will add to your spiritual life, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. So yes, invest your time in reading this book. Let's inshallah listen to the promo and we'll be back after the promo. Stay tuned with Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madani channel, indeed we are living in times of trials and tribulations. Almost every home is affected by one problem, or another whether it is disobedient children or it is destitution or it is domestic problems alhamdulillah azawajal amiri ahli sunnat has given this ummah a beautiful gift by the name of treasure of blessings madani pan surah which consists of many surahs from the holy quran and many invocations 
also the excellence of supplications. This book consists of many things, daily invocations, daily prayers, and the excellences of the Islamic monks. My dear viewers of Madani channel, purchase this book from your nearest Maktabatul Madina. Read it free online from our website www.daftislami.net. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam. Yes, you've just learned more about this beautiful panj surah, subhanallah. And um, there is so much that you can learn. You can memorize those short surahs and those duas and those litanies, inshallah, azawajal, which will help you greatly through your spiritual life, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to read and learn more about our beautiful deen of Islam. Ameen bijahi nabil ameen. Subhanallah, as we conclude our today's discussion, I would uh, conclude with this, that Imam Fakhruddin Razi rahmatullahi ta'ala, a prominent personality in, in the academic world of Islam, he says that I swear by Allah, I have great regret in abandoning academic work, meaning reading and writing whilst I'm eating as Time is a precious treasure, Allah Akbar. He wouldn't even in, want to enjoy his food because he's missing out on his academic work. The, the time that he's uh, taking to consume his food, he thought he could have invested it in his academic tenure. SubhanAllah, look at the thought process of our pious predecessor, Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani, he says that Sayyidina Shamsuddin Asbahani would eat very little in the evening and he feared eating and drinking a lot uh, would lead to a need to relieve himself more often. The more water you drink, the more food you eat, the more you need to relieve yourself. And he says it would cause a lot of time to be wasted. Therefore, he would eat very little. Look at the thought process, how they valued their time, SubhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to value our time. And in this time, we can use this time to recite durood and salam in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah azza wa jal. So keep watching Madani channel. That's it for now, inshallah. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, keep reciting durood and salam and keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold. In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold. In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold. In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold.